Well, it's an ideal location to for the Indians to live here in the summertime. A little stream goes by and they probably had lots of crayfish in it, which are edible, and uh, water that they needed. And there was uh, lots of an abundance of game in the area, in the mountainous area here. Uh, partridge, uh, wild turkeys, deer. Probably back those days, the elk still roamed in this part of the country. So food was quite plentiful in the summertime. And it made a nice, uh, a nice retreat for them uh, to live in the summertime. Like my grandson Hunter, I came up here with my dad, and we uh, dug back into those that ledge and found pieces of pottery and uh, animal bones and charcoal, pieces of flint, which uh, gave us proof that the Indians had stayed here. They probably. Uh, would stack trees and limbs and branches up in the front to make it quite a uh, place out of the weather. And it would be a, they call these rock shelters, Indian rock shelters. Okay, go ahead. If you can just picture uh, sticks laying up along the edge of the ledges there, Hunter, down this way, and close that all in, it would be like a little room back in there. Yeah. So when they had a thunder shower or uh, some bad weather in the summertime, they could they could stay back under there and they slept there at night, and uh, most of their living was outside during the day in the summertime. But that was just a place that they could retreat to, instead of having to build a build a hut or a home. And we're probably uh, three quarters of a mile from the Appalachian Trail. On this ridge, it sort of runs out and drops into the valley into nothingness. But it's typical of those unusual formations we find here in in uh, northwest New Jersey. Springtime is here. All the little leaves are coming out pretty. And uh, we're up here at, uh, at the top of New Jersey and we're a little bit, uh, I would say probably a week or 10 days <clears throat> behind the uh, leafing out down in the lower part of the state. And uh, skunk cabbage is one of the first things that comes up in the springtime along these wet areas. Uh, the bears like that when they first come out of their dens makes good food for uh, animals in the springtime when everybody's pretty much starved out with the winter season going by. All the little uh, plants are coming up, little, little trees starting to grow, and uh, as summer approaches it'll be heavy forested in here, you won't be able to see through the woods at all, but right now it's a, it's a pretty time of year. Uh, you can feel everything coming to life. That's a lichen, it's a, it's a plant really. It uh, grows on these desolate areas up here on the rocks. Makes it pretty. I would estimate that that top rock is in excess of 20 tons. It's not, it's not put there by man. It's put there by nature and the, and the loose stones were taken out from underneath it. This is a piece of solid granite, right? Mm hmm. See this layer right through here? That's chip stone, looser stuff? Yep. Solid granite again? Yep. Okay. Solid granite. Chip stone. Solid granite. This has been taken out little by little. It's pushed down there all one piece. There's been many, uh, theories and controversial theories about how this rock got there. Some people think it was probably just pried up and stones put underneath it. But I've, after doing a lot of studying on this rock ledge here, I think that that was moved out there by the glaciers as is a lot of these other stones we see laying around here that when the glaciers came down through here 10,000 years ago, that uh, triangle of this rock fits right back into that ledge back there and that's solid granite on top and solid granite on the bottom and the center layer of rock is more like shale or loose loose pieces and I think that's all been pushed out there and in one chunk and it's my theory is that they've pulled those pieces of loose rock out a little bit at a time 
and just left those three, uh, that triangular section there sitting up on those rocks because that would fit just perfect right back up into that hole over there and then of course with that uh, that loose shale there coming out and uh, why they did it I don't know but it's probably been a could have been a ceremonial thing maybe just something to do to pass their time away as they lived here in the summertime and the Indians in this part of the country uh, went closer to the shore down by the Delaware where the weather wasn't quite severe so severe as it is in, in this part of New Jersey it's pretty unique it's one of the wonders of New Jersey that not many people know about pretty nice beaver pond here probably a little over an acre it looks like they've got quite a unique dam here it's uh, probably 150 feet across and the, the lodge is out here in the middle and you can see some of the uh, food supply stored up there that they've had from last fall and it's starting to sprout with springtime coming you can imagine this in the winter time frozen right up solid with probably 18 inches of ice over it and the beaver have an entrance under the ice and come up inside they're quite vulnerable to predators like coyotes and bears and so on and uh, so they stay pretty much in there under the water all winter long and that's a that's an oak it's pretty hard and uh, they just cut a little bit at a time and eventually a good storm wind will come and blow it over and then they'll have all those limbs that are above there to to feed on that's quite a quite a dam it's probably pretty near six foot at the at the center point that means you got six foot of water behind it a lot of work and all these sticks are interwoven in there and it's uh hours and hours and hours of the beavers working at it and even they and they take the mud from the bottom of the dam and back along the edge the rocks are all mixed into it and uh, grass and sod quite a unique piece of work follow this this is a rock ledge part of that ledge that went out here and they, they utilize that as part of the dam.